Toastmaster, fellow guests, uh, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. Well, it's sheer determination that's got me here today. Um, I went through copious notes yet again to try and find a topic. And then my so I'm helping my son, who's um, revising for his A-levels, and he asked me to help him with some revision for the learning organisation. He's training to be an accountant. So I, this morning I helped him, and while I did that, I wrote some notes. I know I'm not supposed to use notes, but you'll have to forgive me. I'm not there yet. So what is a learning organisation? What does it look like? And what part do unconscious processes play in the, the learning organisation? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to hopefully talk about both those subject phenomena tonight. Does anyone here not believe in unconscious processes that we operate on different levels of consciousness? That's good. I think you've only got to think about um, a, an emotion that's overwhelmed you that suddenly appeared from nowhere, and you'll wonder, where did that come from? Well, that's an unconscious process. So, um, but we'll, I'll start with the learning organisation. Um, back in the 1980s, Taylor introduced the the learning organisation as um, he viewed it merely as a, a mechanical, in, in mechanical terms, he thought the learning organisation was full of um, rules and regulations and various structures, but lots of companies who adopted his way of um, thinking failed. Woolworths, a recent example is Woolworths. Uh, so, um, it failed because of the rigid hierarchy and uh, because they didn't pay attention really to what was going on under the surface. So, I'll give you an example of uh, unconscious processes in, a learn in an organisation. Well, it's not strictly an organisation. My husband, he's a project manager and he commissions himself out to various clients. And he has many shortcomings, it's true, but what he is a very good people manager, normally. Well, he is a very good people manager. He gets the best from his team. He can drive the job forward, and he gets good results. So, a few months ago, one of his clients emailed him and said that Tom, that's my husband, was um, a very poor, a very weak leader. Now, my husband came home from work and he was, he was really upset and he was shocked because, as I say, that he has many shortcomings, that's not one of them. Um, so, so he tried to contact the um, his client to, to discuss what was going on. But his client was, he proved to be quite elusive in that the only way Tom could contact him was by email or by telephone. So we talked about it and the more Tom told me about what was going on, the more it occurred to us that in fact it was the client who was the weak leader. He hid behind emails, telephone conversations, and just wasn't a very good communicator. So that's uh, an example of projection, um, which is one of our unconscious processes that Freud talks about. He talks about seven different um, defences that we, that the ego will resort to, to ward off anxiety. And it's quite complex and I can't really go into depth in, in the time I've got, but um, basically 
unconscious processes are very powerful motivators in an organisation. Um, I'll, I'll, oh, it's time. I'll finish very quickly with uh, a little story. Um, there were three statisticians, uh, men who are very, um, very, very profound, profound um, number of people, very good with numbers, mathematical boffins, if you like. And they were hunting one day in the woods, and they came across a very fat pigeon in the trees. So they put, so they stopped and they took aim. And the first one fired, and he missed the pigeon by half an inch to the left. And then the second one fired, and he ma managed to miss the pigeon half an inch to the left, to the right. So the third one threw down his gun, and he said, "Good shooting, gentlemen. On average, we've got it." <laughs> <laughs> so I just hope that tonight I've left loads out, but I hope in the law of averages, you've got it. Thank <laughs> you.